Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be planting blueberries in containers. Now, of course, you can use this information if you're planting them in the ground, but if you've ever had problems with blueberries, especially planting them in the ground, then you may live in an area where they will only work for you in containers. Blueberries need an acidic soil, about 4.5 to 5.5 on the range, uh, the pH range. And here, and a lot of places in the West, we have a very alkaline soil, neutral to alkaline. So basically our soil is 7, 7.5. So that is too alkaline for blueberries. Now, if you've never had your soil tested and you don't know what your pH is, you definitely have to do that for blueberries. So if you've had blueberries before and they've been stunted, they are kind of yellow, they never produce fruit, they never really grow much, it's probably a pH issue. So that is why I'm planting in containers. You can control the pH in pots much better than you can control it in the ground, even if you're hypervigilant. So we actually got three of these uh, pots from Sam's Club. They were a really good price. I don't remember what they were, but I knew at the time it was a good price. Now I think I'm gonna go back and buy two more pots because I actually ended up buying five blueberry plants. It's so unlike me to overbuy. So we're gonna control the acidity of our planting medium in the pots by using an acid planting mix. And as you can see, it's good for azaleas, camellias, other acid loving shade plants. And right here it says blueberries. That's gonna get us off to a good start. And then every so often, I'm going to test the pH, which is really easy with a simple test. I'll link one down below. Maybe every two to three months, and then I can, if I need to, add some soil acidifier. So I have four different varieties here. This one is O'Neill. It's good for zones seven to nine. It only needs 400 chill hours. It's five to six feet tall, blooms mid spring, but could start blooming in the fall and keep blooming until mid spring in milder winters. This one here is Pink Lemonade, which actually produces pink berries. Zones five through nine, 300 chill hours, four to five feet tall and wide, blooms late spring. Now, when I'm saying chill hours, what I'm talking about is the amount of hours that it needs in the winter below 45 degrees Fahrenheit to produce a good crop. So there are two different types of um, plants. There's high bush blueberries, and low bush blueberries. Low bush blueberries are more like the wild type of blueberries. They're short. They uh, have, the, the berries aren't as productive, but they are much sweeter. The high bush varieties are much more productive. They can get really tall, up to five, six, even seven feet. Now they're not gonna get that way in a container. So I'm not gonna get that big of bushes. The low bush varieties are for, uh, really good for lower zones. So the zones three through seven, um, are really great for that. They can take cold, cold winters. The high bush varieties are like a, a five to seven or above. And what I have, all of these are Southern high bush varieties, which is just what it sounds like. They're for the South, they're for milder climates. So this one here is Jubilee. And Jubilee is a zone five through nine, 500 chill hours, blooms mid spring. It's about four feet tall. And then I've got two Sunshine Blues. And this is one of the best for mild winters. And it's a, it spans a lot of zones, zones five through 10. It only needs 150 chill hours. Blooms in late spring, three to four feet tall and wide. Now, why do I have so many bushes? All of these say they are self-fruitful, self-pollinating, which means they don't need another plant to pollinate. However, you might get fruit, but you're not gonna get anywhere near the same amount of fruit as if you had another bush blooming nearby of another variety. So I have early, mid, and late season bloomers here. That means hopefully at any given time when one is blooming, there will be another one blooming nearby. It also means I will get a extended period of harvest. So if you just wanna get two, find two different varieties that are you know, work for your area, your chill hours, your zone, and make sure they bloom at the same time. Otherwise, they won't cross pollinate. So one of the problems with growing blueberries or anything for that matter in pots is uh, number one, watering, because they are fully dependent on 
outside sources of water. They can't send their roots out any further to find any. And drainage is another issue. If you look down in this pot, there's one hole. One hole is not enough for this size pot. And they always do this. They never put enough holes for drainage. So I'm gonna drill a few. And by the way, this is a half inch drill bit. The, the hole that was already in there was a slightly bigger. Now the pot itself is 22 inches wide and 19 inches tall. That's too big of a pot to plant a baby little blueberry in. These are actually bare root. They're just put in some wood shavings. It's kind of maybe a little potting mix in there, but they're bare root. All right, just to increase the drainage, I've got some fairly large uh, rock chips, gravel if you will. Gonna put enough just in the bottom there to make a nice layer to cover the holes. I'm also gonna leave a little bit in this pot. Now you might be wondering, well, what's that pot for? Well, this is, like I said, a 22 inch diameter pot. That is big for something like this to go in and get a good start. Plants don't like to be planted in something much bigger than they are. They like to feel a little bit more cozy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double pot these. I'm going to pot this into this, and then I'm going to pot this into this. And what that's gonna allow me to do is keep this cozy, fill the soil or potting mix around it, plant some flowers here around it just for looks. But that layer of soil between the first pot and the second pot, that's gonna insulate the roots of the blueberry to keep them cooler and moister because we live in a place where it gets to be mid 90s in the summertime. Blueberries don't necessarily love that. So this double potting is gonna serve two different purposes. So right now, I'm just going to put this one aside and we're gonna go ahead and plant in this one. Now because Blueberries need more acidic soil. I showed you I've got the acid planting mix. I'm not gonna fill this entire thing with acid planting mix. Number one, acid planting mix tends to be more expensive. So why fill this whole thing with it if only this first little pot needs it? All right, so I'm gonna take some of this acid mix. And again, I've got two inches or so of the rock in there, the crushed or chipped rock. Now, before you plant, if these are bare root, you wanna soak these in water for an hour or so. Um, I don't have to do that because they've been rained on for the last five days. They are well hydrated. But if that is not the case for you, you want to make sure you soak them good. All right, got good roots. So this is actually a potted one. Interesting. This, well, it says bare root. Must have been in there for a little bit. Okay. So we want to make sure that we put it in there and you're going to have about an inch of space between the top of the pot and the top of the soil. So we can make a little bit bigger hole because we're gonna need to mulch these to, again, keep the moisture in. Just fill in with that acid mix around it. Firm it down. Okay. Now back to this pot. Now these are gonna be put on drip irrigation. And so I need to set that up right from the beginning because I don't wanna to have to dig down through here. And I also don't wanna to have to have a drip tube coming from the outside in. It kind of ruins the look. Now I don't know exactly where these pots are gonna go just yet, but I wanna have them prepared. So I've got this quarter inch drip tube. I'm gonna put a quarter inch plug in the end. We wanna keep anything from getting into the end of this before we hook it up. So I'm gonna push that in through the bottom hole and pull it up through the bottom. So now we've got our drip inside the pot. I'm also gonna put a plug in the other end for the same reason. Once we fill this up and I'm ready to install the drip tube that will actually water, this is just a supply line. 
Um, I'll just pop that out, stick a quarter inch barb, and then put a quarter inch line that has the drip hole spaced every six inches. And I'll just kind of spiral it around covering the inside and outside of both uh, the middle pot and the outside rim. Now let's make sure when we put this in here, that's way too deep. We want the soil level in here to match the soil level in here. And we still want to leave a good inch or two at the top for mulch. Now for this, I'm just using the Kellogg's raised, uh, bed, raised bed and potting mix. Don't lose your supply line. Check the level, still a bit short. <clears throat> now, Next winter, this will probably be ready to be in this pot on its own without the center pot. And all I have to do at that time is just shimmy this up out. It will leave a perfect hole for it. I'll slide this out of the container, slide it into the hole. It will barely even know it's been moved. All right, so that's about the right level. I also want this just below the rim of this so I can cover the whole thing with mulch and you'll never know that it's double potted. Make sure it's in the center before you fill in too much and can't move it. Ugh. Why didn't you tell me? Somehow, even after warning you, I buried the drip tube. That's why we put the end on because this would be full of potting mix. All right, the last step is basically just decoration. I've got some little violas. I'm just gonna put a ring all the way around. Here with regular watering, I'm hoping the wind isn't picking up on the microphone. Anyway, uh, with regular watering, violas or pansies will continue blooming. They'll start in fall and they'll bloom all the way through to like june sometimes july so i've got still a few months on these All right, so time to put in the drip. So we're going to take out the plug, add in a quarter inch barb, it's this. And we're gonna put on the drip tube. Every six inches it has an emitter built into the line. And then we're gonna spiral it around and use some landscape stables to hook them down. Put the plug in the end of this. This could be overkill on the drip, I'll have to see and then uh, change it if I need to. But I've got a couple rings running around the outside planting and then a couple of swirls around the middle. All right, so just one thing left and that is to mulch this. Mulching is really important. It's going to keep the moisture in the pot, especially on those hot summer days. And you can use just about anything for mulch. For me, I'm going to use some pine needles because there is the, the thought going around that pine needles help the soil maintain its acidity. I've seen a lot of things that kind of go against that, but whether or not they do, I was able to get these for free from my neighbor. And so I'm just going to go ahead and cover up the soil with a nice layer of these, maybe just an inch or two. I'm going to go ahead and go between the, the violas as well. 
It always looks a tad messy when you first mulch, but once these violas start to grow up and over it, you probably won't even see the wood, the uh, pine needles at all. Now, if you live in a humid summer climate, this mulching step may not be necessary for you, but for me, in a hot, dry summer climate, it's definitely necessary. So I've got two more pots to buy and four more pots to plant. I'm gonna do that while you get busy on yours. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share it with a gardening friend, and I'll see you next time.